just got in from a workout and no I, I, I don't feel good and I don't understand what people mean by just got in from a workout and boy well, do I feel great I don't know what that means I feel like shit terrible I'm sweaty I stink but I also just got a chance to watch episode 5 of a, a very intriguing program on YouTube or, or, or just series rather uh, the UFC is doing called Embedded UFC Embedded and uh, I, I thought last year they more than outdid themselves with um, with uh, the preview of the fights of Anderson Silva and Chris Wybin. I forget what the show was called. It was on Fox Sports 1. I think it was like called like Retake or something like that. Shoot me in the comments section and let me know um, if you can think of the name of the show. Um, but it was incredible. It was it was to build the fight. I loved the show. Um, it, it was incredible. And it, it was Wybin versus Silva. They, 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 they did it at the end of the year. I think they did one. Uh, before that too, don't know who though, but in this embedded series, uh, episode 5, Dana White gets a phone call from none other than Nick Diaz, but that's it, all it says is, you know, UFC welterweight Nick Diaz on the phone, Nick Diaz, and for for whoever doesn't know out there, I'm the biggest Diaz brothers fan, I, I, every time I see the Diaz brothers fight, I can't take my eyes off the screen, I've seen every one of their fights several times, I think they're by far the most exciting uh, entertaining, enigmatic figures in mixed mixed in, in mixed martial arts period today. Excuse me, I just uh, the, and there's no change in my mind. Um, uh, White takes a phone call, uh, doesn't really follow up on it. Uh, Matt Brown um, is hot right now. I, I love Matt Brown. I think he's an incredible fighter, blue collar, just like I like him. I'm a huge fan of Matt Brown. Huge fan. Plus, I'm from Pittsburgh. He's from Ohio. Both from small towns. Great guy, love Matt Brown, keeps it real. Nate Diaz calls out Matt Brown. Uh, Dana White shuts it down immediately, saying that Nate Diaz is only you know one and two in his last three outings. Plus, that was at lightweight where Nate belongs, but he'd be more than willing to do Nick Diaz versus Matt Brown. Now, this is the fight I called for in the first place. I called for Nick Diaz to come out of retirement. They need to pay the man and make this fight happen. Here's why: with George St. Pierre. And Anderson Silva being inactive for now, as far as pay-per-view numbers go, they're going to drop. They're going to drop significantly. Not that many people are, you know, the sport's still brand new. You don't see, you know, it's not as, nearly as big as the NBA, the the um, the NFL. It, it's not even close. However, it is the Super Bowl of mixed martial arts. It does do uh, pretty big numbers when it has the right people. And I feel like right now would be a brilliant time. To make a even an even bigger star out of either Diaz brother, preferably Nick Diaz, pay him the 500 grand he wants for the fight and let him fight Matt Brown. Here's what I believe would happen, and please don't get mad. I'm just saying. That, I mean, this is from a biased point of view as well. You know, I, I love Matt Brown, but Matt Brown is on an incredible streak. He's up there with George St. Pierre, John Jones, and Anderson Silva as far as winning streaks go. Um, Nick Diaz, I I think he can stop. Matt Brown, and by stop, I mean stop him, stoppage, referee stoppage, submission, knockout, uh, TKO, something. I think that Nick Diaz would finish Matt Brown. Um, I think it would be billed as one of the biggest fights. I think they could do it this year, probably the end of uh, 2014. Pay Nick 500 grand. You're going to make it back it, it, hand over fist. I don't know anybody that, that wouldn't wouldn't pay to see that fight. Don't know anybody. Put it on the same card as um, Pettis and, and, and Melendez. Make a make an extremely huge deal and event um, out of uh, Nick Diaz versus Matt Brown. I think it's great. And, and then winner, you know, be in line for for Johnny Hendricks. Only makes sense to me, man. It's not like the UFC doesn't have five hundred thousand dollars. Joe Rogan revealed that George St. Pierre was making four million dollars per fight. Four million. Being that George St. Pierre relinquished his belt. And Nick Diaz is still a um, is still on the UFC roster as an active UFC welterweight and a top one at that. He deserves the shot with Matt Brown and the money that comes with it. So does Brown. I think Nick would stop him. Nick Nick's technique, the, his pressure, his hands, his boxing, his submissions, his mental game, experience that he has, and the expectations that Nick would have. You know, finally getting this big payday, his return to the UFC. Nick would not let us down. Every time Nick has been expected to fail, either that or come in, you know, as a big name, 
and lose or or come in as a big name and win. He's done so. He's always he always rises to the occasion. He's well worth the money. Um, uh, Matt Brown, he gassed versus Eric Silva. I felt like he got tired pretty quick. Uh, I understand he had a nine month layoff. Nick Diaz, fuck Christ, the last fight he had was UFC 158 in February of 2013, which was a title fight, five rounds against George St. Pierre. That was, I mean, that was close to 16 months ago. By the time this fight happens, it'll be almost two years since Nick Diaz has been in the octagon. Matt Brown would have a significant advantage. But cardio and Diaz, you're not going to beat him. This guy can go 15 rounds, and he never looks any different. He never gets tired. He doesn't get tired. And that is, folks, that is a weapon all in its own. He doesn't get tired. The pit-pat punches would never stop. The pressure would never stop. And if he did manage to drop Brown, who's also a very versatile fighter, very versatile striker, saw the Muay Thai against Eric Silva, super effective. Couldn't put it away, super effective. Uh, Nick Diaz has an iron chin, granite chin. Uh, also great boxing defense, striking defense. Uh, doesn't throw too many kicks. When he does, he throws them from the stance. Not to hurt you, but just kind of to throw a kick. Um, it, it, it would be extremely hard for someone like Matt Brown to fight someone like Nick Diaz, to prepare to fight someone like Nick Diaz. Um, it, one thing that kind of upset me was when Dana shut Nate Diaz down and said there's no way, it makes no sense in the world, we're not going to make this happen, is it just shows you, you know, the hierarchy of, of, you know, the Diaz brothers. Who's more important, who he thinks is worth more, and who he wants to fight who. Now, I mean, you know, maybe this is just, maybe he's doing it from a business standpoint, a personal standpoint. It really doesn't matter. Nick Diaz is, um, you know, he's playing hard to get, and it's tempting. And the public wants to see him. I'm sure Dana wants to have him back. And uh, Matt Brown uh, versus Nick Diaz would be one hell of an event. You know you're in for a good fight. You know they're not going to be boring. How can that possibly be boring? How could it be boring? Now, when he was fighting Eric Silva, Matt Brown gets his back taken. I thought it's a wrap. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt under the Noguera brothers. Has you, you know, wrapped up pretty tight. The neck crank was super tight. I don't know if anyone, any one of you out there has never put in a neck crank. It's fucking scary. I'd rather be choked. I'd rather, much rather, have a full sunk rear naked choke put on me than a uh, crank because that shit will end your career, son. If something snaps or pops back there, you know, who, who knows how long you could be out for. But this fight can't be boring. It can't be. Nick's ground game's incredible. So is Matt's. I, I, his it, his defense against that choke, the the first half of the of the first round um, against Eric Silva, show, uh, shows the just ever improving evolution of Matt Brown, especially his ground game. I felt he did get out grappled, and then he got his brown belt for for you know getting out grappled or you know not getting submitted. Is that enough to get a brown belt? Definitely not. Not in any schools I ever attended, but. Gotta love MMA. That's what happened. Comes back in the second round. Looks fresher than, than uh, Eric Silva, but looks tired. In that round, say that Eric Silva was Nick Diaz and it, it was the exact same fight. He would have to put up with a guy that's coming probably twice as hard as he did in the first, in the second, and third, the same thing. They only come harder. They only press harder. They only go longer. You know, they don't slow down. They keep up the pace. The pressure, I think, would overwhelm and eventually break Matt Brown, giving Nick Diaz the win. Now, listen, I I've been telling folks forever, don't bank on Nick Diaz ever returning. Oh, man, working out sucks. Don't bank on Nick Diaz returning. I don't think we'll ever see Nick Diaz fight again. I'm just entertaining the thought because in this embedded series, it does show Nick Diaz calling. Uh, Dana White, after Dana White publicly shut down uh, a fight, uh, you know, uh, for his brother Nate to uh, take a fight against Matt Brown, shut it down, but said openly on UFC Tonight that he would easily, in a heartbeat, make Nick Diaz versus Matt Brown, which is all the more intriguing. Let me know what you think in the comment section.